90 years old. It's hard to believe Catherine Depke is 90 years old. That's a respectable time to live on this earth. But measuring one's life by years is only a small part of the bigger picture. It's what you do with your time that shapes personality and character. And we all know one character who's got a lot of personality. Catherine Louise Goldberg Depke. Let's take a look back at some of the formative events in her life. Catherine Louise Goldberg doesn't remember December 18, 1921, the day a Sutton's Bay, Michigan doctor cried out, It's a girl! She was born into a 100% Norwegian family. Her father, Gottfried Goldberg, was a Lutheran minister from a distinguished lineage of doctors, scientists, and Norwegian national icons. Her mother, Agneta Kalstad, was the daughter of a scholar and descended from the famous Folgner family line on her mother's side, tracing her roots as far back as Harald the Fair-Haired, first king of Norway. Agnes took up the mantle of a minister's wife and the mother of four. Catherine, or Kay, was the third of four children, an only daughter with three handsome brothers. First was Carl, or Erling as he was called, then Gottfried Jr., nicknamed Slug because of his baseball prowess, and finally Harold, who looked even more fair-haired than his ancestor. They grew up in the parsonage next to the First Evangelical Lutheran Church on the corner of Adams and St. Mary Street in Sutton's Bay. Just three blocks from the lake, the Goulburg children got in plenty of swimming, fishing, skating, and skiing. Young Kay attended Union Public School, took piano lessons from Anna Bailey, one of the parishioners, and generally grew up to be a well-behaved girl whose mother always admonished the children to not do anything that might tarnish the pastoral office of their father. In her teens, she played organ and sang for her father's church services, Worked one summer sorting those famous Michigan cherries on a production line, something like the famous I Love Lucy scene, and also worked part-time at a local restaurant for a dollar a day. This hard-earned money wound up being sacrificed to buy her ailing mother a fur coat for a trip to Norway. Agnes had barely survived episodes of pneumonia and rheumatic fever and would leave the family behind for a nine-month recuperative visit to Norway in 1937. During her absence, Kay's father received and accepted a call to a new parish in Faustin up in northern Minnesota. With older brothers Erling and Slug off to college and mother Agnes in Norway, it was just Reverend Goulberg, young Harold and Kay who moved to Faustin in April of 1938. Oh, and let's not forget Agnes's father, Grandpa Kalstad. He lived with them for over 25 years. Faustin was a wonderful change for the family in 1938. The area was more prosperous. Agnes returned home healthy that spring, and when her older sons came home from college for the summer, the Goulberg family dazzled the community with their talent, energy, and enthusiasm. Kay quickly fit in at Faustin High School, playing clarinet in the band, taking part in plays, speech contests, and singing in the choir. She got good grades and graduated in 1939. Bethany College in Mankato was the school to which good Norwegian Lutherans sent their children. Kay Goulberg studied organ and voice, sang in a trio, and a choir directed by the famous Reverend Ozzie Hoffman. She became president of her class, produced a talent show, and remembers getting in trouble for going to see the movie Gone with the Wind, unapproved yet by the faculty of Bethany, who just happened to be sitting in the front row of the theater previewing it. She graduated with a two-year Associate of Arts degree in the spring of 1941 and accepted a parochial teaching position for the next fall. 
home for the summer, tragedy struck in July as Catherine's father died unexpectedly in July at a minister's conference. The Faustin days came to an abrupt end as Kay left to teach in Albert Lee, Minnesota that fall of 1941, and her mother Agnes followed. Our Savior's Lutheran Church of Albert Lee packed 18 kids, grades 1 through 8, in the church annex and hired Kay Goulberg to teach them all for $60 a month. She roomed at a parishioner's house for $5 a month and had her father's car for a while to drive into Minneapolis to visit her mother, who had relocated there. Kay only did this for one year. It was tough work and she wanted to go back to college and get her bachelor's degree to work in music. Kay's mother Agnes, the minister's widow, had been helped by Gottfried's colleagues to set up a rooming house at 1707 University Avenue by the University of Minnesota. Kay enrolled at the U and stayed with her mother as World War II got into full swing. She studied voice, sang in choirs, joined the music sorority Mu Phi Epsilon and directed the choir at the Lutheran Student Chapel. She met lots of friends at Gamma Delta gatherings, including the Missouri Synod engineering student Henry Depke. Hank Depke grew up in Minneapolis, the son of a well-known German house mover, H.L. Depke. His trucks proclaimed, here comes Depke on the front and there goes Depke on the back. Hank met Kay at a Gamma Delta toboggan party and started wooing her with letters, notes, and dates. After her junior year, she agreed to teach early because of a war shortage. Issued a special teaching certificate Kay Goulberg moved to Chatfield, Minnesota in the fall of 1943 to teach music, choir, and junior business at the Chatfield Public School. She taught for one year, making new friends, and traveled back to Minneapolis every couple of weeks to see and help out her mother. Meanwhile, Hank Depke had developed a scheme to propose to Kay over the telephone. He was now an ensign, having enlisted in the Navy after receiving his degree in civil engineering. He planned to mail the ring to his family, who would invite Kay over for dinner on March 18th and take his proposal call while they brought the ring out with the schnitzel. Well, okay, maybe it wasn't schnitzel. Well, the ring didn't arrive in time, but she accepted over the phone and became officially engaged when the ring arrived at the Chatfield Post Office later that week. Catherine Goulberg, who had just received her bachelor's degree in music education, married Ensign Henry Depke on Sunday, August 13, 1944, at Fairview Lutheran Church in North Minneapolis. The weather was hot, the music glorious, and the reception was held at her mother's rooming house on University Avenue. Catherine and Henry spent their honeymoon at the Hotel del Otero on Lake Minnetonka, where Hank was chagrined to discover that the ritzy hotel he had booked from the brochure had actually become a shabby old dump. They soon left by train for Boston, where he was stationed at the Boston Navy Yard. On the way there, they stopped in New York City to stay with his sister Marie for a few days while seeing the Rockettes, the Statue of Liberty, and other New York sites. Both of them were amazed at a newfangled food automat device they discovered at Grand Central Station. The Navy found them an apartment at 285 Harvard Street 
in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So while Hank would do his inspections at the Navy Yard, Kay found a job at the Harvard Engineering Library cataloging and labeling books. She worked there until she was very pregnant with her first child, Karen, who was born August 26, 1945, at the Chelsea Naval Hospital. The next spring of 1946, Lieutenant J.G. Hank Depke finished his Navy career and packed up his wife, baby, and slide ruler to drive home to Minneapolis. Kay and Hank soon moved into their first house in Minneapolis at 2805 Oakland Avenue South. Both Hank and his brother Bill went to work moving houses with their legendary father who had given them side-by-side -side homes on Oakland Avenue. While Kay took care of infant Karen and soon her new little brother Chris, Hank and Bill moved houses with Pa. Kay and Hank had joined Trinity First Lutheran Church right away in 1946. It was Hank's family church and he had gone to parochial school there. Kay wanted to be more involved and soon started a children's cherub choir. By 1950, the choir director position was offered to her and she took up the baton. Soon she was directing senior choir, junior choir, boys choir, and what she called the triple trio. While two more children came along, Bruce in 1950 and Barbara in 1953, Kay made the time to make her ministry of music at Trinity First a rich experience. She produced pageants with the progressive pastor Clarence Pauling, staged Trinity Day School operettas with Principal Frank Banke, and brought her choirs out into the community and even on television. Busy being the mother of four and the Trinity Choir Master, Kay also found time in the 1950s to be a Cub Scout den mother with her neighbor Marie Solzbach. Take the kids swimming at Lake Calhoun and enjoy the annual Aquatennial Parade sitting high on the back of Hank's pickup. The Depkeys enjoyed family trips. In 1954, the six of them roamed the Black Hills of South Dakota. In 1956, the Goulburg clan took over a motel at Wisconsin Dells. In 1958, they borrowed a camp trailer and drove to Canada. None ever forgot that fateful night the kids all moved to one end at once and teeter-totter the whole trailer up on its end. <laughs> In 1960, after the family drove around endless Sundays looking for suburban lots, the Depkeys built and moved into a new home in Golden Valley. Kay was thrilled with her new kitchen and the Baldwin piano in the living room. The younger children were still driven to Trinity First Lutheran School, but the older ones would go to Robbinsdale High School, one of the finest in the state. The house on Mary Hills Drive was perfect for entertaining, with relatives coming out for Easter, Thanksgiving, or anniversaries, or meetings and parties with the Trinity First Fellowship Club, a group of friends that met monthly. The children also held parties in the basement rec room after their school musicals that they acted and sang in. In mid-1962, Hank and his brother Bill split up their house moving business. Bill would keep the Depke Building Movers name, and Hank would start his own Depke Engineers. On his own and with house moving demands slowing down, Hank finally asked Kay to go back to work. An interviewer at Dayton's department store looked at her resume and said, What are you, nuts? Why are you applying here? Go back to teaching. So Catherine went back to the U of M for some extra credits and got her teaching certificate. Thus began her career with the Minneapolis Public Schools 
Catherine Depke's first assignment in 1963 was Emerson School near Loring Park, both elementary and junior high. In 1966, Emerson dropped their junior high grades and Catherine was moved to Sheridan Junior High in Northeast Minneapolis that fall. Hank, meanwhile, had given up the house moving business and opened a franchise restaurant in Brooklyn Center called Taco Town, hiring children and relatives, spending long hours perfecting his menu, and devising eccentric promotions, like the two-man bull that Chris and Bruce took out into the streets. <laughs> Catherine's six years at Sheridan Junior High enriched her skills and competence. She got her master's degree in 1967, and among her many concerts, projects, and shows, the one she'll never forget was Epo. You wouldn't see anything like it in the public junior highs. Well, that is, unless Catherine Debke was teaching there. In 1972, she accepted a new position, that of secondary resource teacher. Catherine started a newsletter for teachers, created slideshows and other program materials, taped and edited school bands and choirs for her own radio show on KBEM radio and was a general whirlwind of creativity for almost three years. When she got bumped out of that job, she taught at Central High School in 1975-76 where she had Prince Roger Nelson in one of her classes. Catherine went out of her way to check out and deliver the school district's first synthesizer to his house for a recording session. Just one of the many music careers she nurtured. Her last school was Falwell Junior High from 1976 to 1983. She co-produced several musicals with another teacher and will never forget the day two girls were fooling around and tipped a classroom piano over on her, snapping her left ankle. Catherine Depke retired from teaching in 1983. So, what did she do in the next 30 years to occupy her time? First, let's see what her children were up to. Karen married Gil Cernet in 1968 and raised two daughters. Both Karen and Gil have retired from teaching and now live north of Dallas, Texas. Chris married Shirley Bell in 1986 and has an extended family you need a tree to navigate. He's retired from the Air Force, currently works in networking, and resides near San Antonio, Texas. Bruce, or Jack, married Don Krogman in 1976 and liked weddings so much, he later married Carol Dahl in 1989. He has four children from his two families, is a retired entertainer, and currently lives in Chisago City, north of St. Paul. Barbara married Mark Potuck in 1976, has two sons, still teaches dance, and lives in Goshen, Indiana. And there's plenty of great-grandchildren, but nobody can remember their names or where they left them. So, Catherine created a musical cabaret group of seniors called the Gray Heirs. She wrote and produced five different shows that toured around the greater Twin Cities for 10 years. Catherine is a retired Minneapolis music teacher. She's devoted the greatest part of her life to music. And a side note, uh, she at one time taught Prince music theory. Uh, she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't like the type of lyrics he use or the type of music, but she always mentioned that he was a very talented gentleman.
Catherine was a member of many civic groups and spent years being active and traveling to conventions. She's a member of the musical sorority Mu Phi Epsilon since 1943 and was international president from 1992 through 95. Thursday Musical is a Minnesota organization that offers performance and education opportunities to artists and audiences. Catherine wasn't a member when they formed in 1892, but did serve as their president from 1995 through 97 over the decades she's belonged. The American Association of University Women meets on Mondays and Catherine is an active member. In addition to serving on various committees, she plays the grand piano in the lecture hall to warm up the audience before the day's programs. She's even recorded some of her tunes on CD by audience request. The Minnesota chapter of the American Choral Directors Association is especially near and dear to her heart. So many colleagues, friends, and choir symposiums. In 2001, Catherine was especially thrilled to be awarded the prestigious F. Melius Chris Johnson Award for her years of preparing the young singers who grew into their voices within Minnesota's rich choral heritage. This spring, ACDA featured her story in their Star of the North newsletter. She's completing her 12th year as president of her congregation and has authored three books. The History of Trinity First Lutheran School, the History of Trinity First Lutheran Church, and an original children's story inspired by her great-grandson Aidan. There's so much more that Catherine Gulberg depke has achieved over the decades that one tires just reading about it. She continues to this day with her strong faith in God, her love of family and friends, and regular trips to her hairdresser and snap fitness. Catherine Louise Gulberg Depke, we honor you in this your 90th year. We thank you for who you are and what you've accomplished. 
and wish you good health and God's blessings in all your future endeavors.